Hey, 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 my dear hearts, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Healing Hearts with the Heart Surgeon, where we know that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the ultimate heart surgeon. For my first time viewers, thank you so much for joining. And for those who are back again, welcome back. <laughs> thank you so much for joining. And I want to give a shout out to those people who have been sending me um, testimonies, encouraging words, uh, just liking the channel and liking what God is doing here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It truly means a lot. If one heart is touched, then that means that, you know, it's worth it, right? Like, I'm on the right path. God is doing what he wants to do, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Took us a long time to get here, so hey, we're here now. We're out there in the deep. <laughs> so we're going to keep paddling and keep going. <laughs> But thank you all so much. Thank you. It really means a lot. You you truly have blessed me. And I pray that God and Holy Spirit and Jesus continue to bless you even more. So let's welcome Holy Spirit in. We know that he's within us. But I want him to saturate our atmosphere. So Father God, I thank you, Lord God, right now. I thank you for another day. I thank you for another Friday. I thank you, Father, for each and every heart that is here tonight. I thank you, Lord God, that you will continue to bless them and keep them, Lord God, that you will continue to do the work on their hearts, Father God, that you reveal those things that are hidden even to them, Lord God, that they will be able to, that you will perform the necessary surgery on their hearts on today, Lord God. I thank you for, for filling my mouth, Father, and speaking through me, Lord God. I thank you just for um, your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your peace, your love, and your joy. Thank you for your newness. And we glorify you and we honor you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, okay, okay. So I have a quick word from the Lord today. It kind of piggybacks off of the word yesterday. Um, it is Isaiah 54 and 17. And it reads, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And... Your, their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. So, let's see. What he was saying to me was, um, clearly, you know, like no weapon formed against us <laughs> will prosper. And even though things around us seem to, um, they seem to prosper because it's permitted for a certain amount of time, right? But just because it's permitted for a certain amount of time, it doesn't mean that it's truly prospering. It just means that this is happening. Just like yesterday with um, the example with um, Jesus telling them they were going to the other side. And then the storm comes and, you know, the disciples are like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, stop. You know, wake up, Jesus, wake up. We're going to perish. We're going to die. The storm is, you know, all that. And Jesus is over here chilling, right? He's sleeping. And and they're looking at him like, why? Like, yo, you don't see what's going on? And, of course, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm just telling you. It's like, you don't see what's going on here? And, um, you know, oh, yeah, of little faith. He, he gets on them about their faith. Like, didn't I tell you we went to the other side? We going. And it's the same thing with this word. He was, it was like he was putting them together for me that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Because when we step into our authority, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, and then it's like when we begin to do the work, because that's the part I think that a lot of us, we miss. I know I didn't get that part, you know, I didn't know that, okay, there's some more stuff, you know, you know it's there, but you don't know how to do it or what are the steps, we don't talk about it a lot. So it's like, okay, well, how do I get to this next step? Because I'm having this belief system that's causing me to disconnect with, with God, you know, because you think that, you know, once you're saved, it's like Simba, you know, you get lifted up and God is going to speak this big word. And maybe he has to some people. I didn't get that. <laughs> I didn't get that right away <laughs> when I did hear from him, you know, but it's like you go out there and it's like I'm changed, right? And But you still walk out, even though you've accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and that's a blessing. Um, and you're welcome into the kingdom. But now that's when the real work begins, where you have to go and start saying, okay, and as you continue to to obey him, because to love him is to obey him, right? And as we're, we're walking along this journey with, with loving God and, and Jesus the Holy Spirit and walking in fellowship, it's like, wait a minute, I don't know if I really believe that you love me because all this stuff has happened for so long, right? And um, I don't really know how to feel different about it because we don't really talk about stuff like that. Like, you're God. Like, you sit up there and, you know you do you and um even that that 
that view has to be shifted and changed. So it's like, okay, well, maybe I didn't have a, 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 a the best relationship with my father growing up, or, or maybe I didn't have the best relationship with my mother growing up, or maybe I just don't have, I have brokenness in relationships, period, and I don't really know how to connect that part with you to believe that you're going to do what you said you're going to do because everyone else has rejected me, everyone else has abandoned me, everyone else has left me. So how do I know for sure that even though this word says this and these things continue or appear to prosper in my life for such a long time that you're going to do what you said you're going to do God you know it, those things those questions that people don't want to ask or don't know how to talk about that's what I, that's what this channel is all about you know get into the root of a thing beginning to understand okay why this is there so that we can go back to that break up with it because you have to break agreement with it. You have to denounce it. You have to renounce it. You have to, to, to separate yourself from that thought, from that inner oath, from that judgment, from that vow that you made that said, yeah, he's just like my daddy. God is just like my daddy. God is just like my mama. God is just like this. God is just like that. My anger towards him. Because people don't want to talk about them being angry with God. We have to be real people and understand that he can handle it. But he has he needs us to be honest and open to say, you know, I don't know if we get to the other side, God, because this has always happened. This has always happened. So I don't know because I've never seen the other side before because it's always looked like this. So how do I break agreement with this? So you go back to that that place, you know, ask Holy Spirit to take you back to that place when 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 your father didn't show up or because this is what you believed or that you know you sometimes i know with my anger i think i talked about it before where i, I somebody messed with me hey hey we can go right but that's wrong <laughs> i'm not supposed to do that because he said vengeance is mine saith the lord but then it's like well then i'm like a punk then i'm gonna look like this no nothing goes unnoticed by god he sees and knows everything it's all recorded it's all recorded you don't have to worry about it he sees it he's gonna take care of it and if you <laughs> and if you're in a place god you can pray to him and daddy deal with them deal with them and then you you also ask him to deal with you you know give me a new heart a new spirit remove the heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh pour out your spirits that can be obedient to your statutes for them as well so we have to begin to know that if, if we battle not against flesh and blood blood you know, it's the spirit behind this person. What is that? And why is that irritating yours? And why I need to find out what's in there so I can get all that out, uprooted, so you don't bother my peace anymore. I can still have peace that guards my heart, <laughs> regardless of what you do and what anyone else does, right? So, see, God be taking and twisting and turning. It's okay. Have your way, Holy Spirit. So, um, it's, it's like the same thing with the no weapon formed against us. Like, it appears to grow. It appears to be bigger. In the climate that we're living in today, we have to know that no matter how big it is, God hasn't forgotten us. He hasn't forsaken us. He hasn't left us. It just appears that the enemy may be winning, quote unquote. It just appears it looks a certain type of way. But we have to know that God has never lost a battle. And he ain't about to start now. Okay, there's nothing that's too hard for him. There's nothing that's too big for him. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He got this. He got you. Everything that you are believing and asking him for, he is faithful and, and just, and he will do it. He will vindicate you. Everything that was lost, everything that was stolen. He said that, that, that he will contend with those who contend with you. That, that means against your, your family, your health, your marriage, your friend. Like everything that concerns you, he is concerned about. So we have to make sure that our hearts are in a posture to understand that no God loves you regardless. Regardless. And, and to know that though things are permitted for a time and they appear to prosper, but they will not come to a finality, right? They, they don't have a final say. They don't have the final say. Ha, thank you, God. God has the final say in your situation, not what appears to be prospering. You better go ahead, Jesus. Okay. Okay? Like, it's not what appears to be prospering that has the final say but what god said just as when jesus said we're going to the other side he had the final say regardless of the storm that came the rain and the waves and the perishing and all that the people going nuts no what did i say oh ye of little faith this is a season and a time for our faith to be increased the church has to rise up to a place of where our faith and what we and, and, and what god says overrides what we see 
That is the only way we are going to make it. That is the only way the church is going to wake up. That is the only way the church is going to rise up and take its rightful position. Because he said it's impossible to please him without faith. If we don't have faith the size of a mustard seed and understand what's going on in our hearts to see what we truly believe, how can we move forward? How can we have the faith that we need to believe in what we see and what we don't see? I'm sorry. How can we have the faith to believe in what we don't see? If we don't know what's in here to find out why is this blocking me from getting to a place with him where we're in alignment with the word of God and, and understand it, that this is the truth that overrides the facts. This is the truth. The blood of Jesus, it overrides any fact. That's not truth. The word of God has the final say in your situation. Regardless of what you see and what you think is prospering, cast those thoughts down. They have no place or power in your life, in your mind. Silence the mouth of the enemy, okay? Psh, psh, ah, ah, okay? Just, ah, like that. Just, ah. mm. Sometimes you got to do that. I don't care if people think you crazy. You know what you got to do to keep your peace, to keep your mind, to keep your faith, and to make sure you are uh, focused on his eyes, and not the raging storm around you. And to know that he has the final say. That he said this is an inheritance, a heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me. But what if you didn't believe or see yourself as an heir? To know that, that you deserve what he said is already yours. Who wants a bank account with millions of dollars and don't ever go check on it? And don't want to withdraw? I, I want everything he has for me. And I want you to want everything he has for you. You got to go back and do that work to find out, okay, what's in that bank, you know, that account that I, I have access to. So then you begin to, to use the keys in order to unlock things to be able to get into that, that bank account. And I mean, unlock the chambers of your heart to go through these places, get this out, get that out, whatever displeases him. Because the more that we, we the, the freer we are in our hearts and the more in alignment we are with the word of God, the, 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 he said it's impossible to please him without faith. So imagine if we have faith. And it's growing and he's stretching us during various circumstances. Imagine what he'll do for you just because he loves you. Not because you worked at it. Not because you, you, you prayed 12 hours a night. Not because you turned around three times. None of that. But just because he wants to because he loves you. So I pray <laughs> that this blesses somebody tonight. I know it blessed me. <laughs> I believe thoroughly that when um, word goes forth, it ministers to me first. And I pray that the seeds are planted in your heart, in good soil. So I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, thank you, thank you for your word that has gone forth on tonight. I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I thank you, Father, for the, the inheritance. I thank you for... Um, us being heirs of Christ Jesus, Lord God, that we have access to to speak and command the, and silence the, the, the waves and the storms and the winds that come against us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that even though things appear to prosper for a certain time, that they are, don't have the final say, that you have the final say in our lives, Father God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the final say, Father God. I thank you for the power and authority and dominion that you have given to us. May we utilize it properly according to your will and your way in our lives. May we yield, surrender, and submit completely to you in your way, Lord God. We glorify you. We honor you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As I said earlier, I pray that this word bless somebody on tonight. Um, until next video, my dear hearts, I'll see you later.